Good evening, football fans, and welcome to Hedgesville, West Virginia at the beautiful Muma Stadium for tonight's game between our Hedgesville Eagles and the visiting Preston Knights. I'm here with the Tyler Bub. Tyler, how are you doing tonight, I'm buddy? I'm good, all right. How about yourself? I'm pretty good. Are you ready for this great football game we're about to watch? Yes. All great right. night for some football. So Hedgesville has been on the come up the last couple years under Coach Urish. He started last year 5-5, five and five, made it to the first playoff game in 19 years. Unfortunately, we lost that to Martinsburg, dropped us to 5-6. and six. If the Eagles win this game tonight, we can match last year's win total. What, in your mind, do they have to do? What are your keys to the game for the Eagles tonight? They have to limit turnovers. Turnovers have been a big problem for Hedgesville so far. 14 turnovers in five games. So if they can limit the turnovers, they'll be able to be more successful in tonight's game. Right. Jason Plotter does have nine interceptions kind of been the big bug for the Eagles this year he had did that although six of those did come in one game so he's kind of been off and on fumbles not as big of an issue but if the Eagles do want to win tonight they will have to limit the turnovers mm -hmm. now Preston comes in at one and four struggling on the year so far what did they have to do to come in here and shock these Eagle fans they have to score early and they have to score often if they can force turnovers make the offense struggle a little bit and they can score touchdowns out of it they'll be really successful tonight yeah, we were watching their kicker and warm-ups, not the greatest. Do you think that if they're in fourth and short territory, closer, maybe in the red zone, they might go for it to try to get themselves on the board? Yeah, fourth and medium, fourth and five, fourth and four, definitely see them going for it. Well, and as we stated earlier, Hedgesville's been on the come up the last couple of years, but last year, Hedgesville sports really took off with eight sectional titles. You play soccer and baseball yep. with, with me. You're my teammate, mm -hmm. one of the best middle infielders I've seen. Congratulations on that, Tyler. Appreciate it. Yeah. But eight sectional titles, a couple state represent, a couple state championships in swimming. This year, pretty much the same story. The girls' soccer team, 11 1 and 2, I'm pretty sure. They're on their way to Charleston for a state tournament here shortly. Mm -hmm. Golf is participating in the state tournament next week. What do you think has changed around Hedgesville and their culture of sports? Just the belief, coaches buying in. Yeah, the school's so supportive of everyone, so it really helps out. You know, just the overall opportunity for sports to be successful here at the school. I agree. Uh, it's fun. Like you can, he maybe you guys can hear the fans. I know I can. They're excited for this game. It's only our second home game, so it should be a good game here tonight. Preston coming in, trying to pull off an upset with. I don't know. Coming off a loss to Lewis County, 14 to 35 last week, they may have their work cut out for them. Yeah, um, Hedgesville coming off a win against James Wood. They'll have momentum. But Preston will be very motivated after they lost last year to Hedgesville by a whopping score. 58-13. to 13. It was an yes. embarrassment. Hedgesville went down to Preston during their Buckwheat Festival and really took care of business. And now we're going to get to some game day picks for the week. A lot of high school football games. Yes. A lot of good games. Let's see what we have on the schedule first. Tonight, Washington defeated on winless this year 0 and 5 has not won a game against Martinsburg defending state champs 5 and 0 really taking care of business last year won 72 to 11 Tyson Bajant this year 12 touchdowns one pick 868 yards really really solid offense for these Bulldogs what do you think is going to happen in that game Washington being in rebuilding mode Martinsburg so talented both sides of the ball I see a blowout Martinsburg big all right, next game up on the docket, Boonesboro 2-2 two two at Spring Mills 3-2. Spring Mills coming off a win against a South Hagerstown team that these Eagles lost to, our only blemish on our record this year. Eight points allowed in that game is the lowest spree, uh, score Spring Mills has allowed this season, a season best for their defense. And Boonesboro is a run-oriented team, so mm -hmm. maybe that Spring Mills defense is a little hyped up, ready to stop that Boonesboro run. What do you think happens in that game? Um, Boonesboro coming off a big loss last week to Middletown. 35-7. Spring Mills has a lot of energy just ready to play and I think they pull off victory. Close game though. Close game. At home? Yeah. Alright, next we have Kaiser at Hampshire. Hampshire will come to Hedgesville later in this later in the season. And last year Kaiser really took care of business, beating up on the Trojans 41 to 7. Kaiser's coming off a 46 to 14 win over Jefferson High School, who these Eagles took care of already this season. Hampshire coming off another loss. They've really been back and forth this year at their schedule. A loss followed by a win, followed by a loss, followed by a win. So maybe they can rewrite the script. What do you think happens in Hampshire tonight? Kaiser coming off a big win against Jefferson. I don't see how they can be stopped. They're going to ride their momentum into this week's matchup. I see Kaiser winning. 
Next, we dip down in double-A. Berkeley Springs traveling to North Marion. Berkeley Springs coming off their first win of the year a couple weeks ago. Had a bye week this past week. Ready to prepare for that 11th-ranked North Marion Husky offense. Quarterback Dalton Malcolm, 15 of 25, four touchdowns and 257 yards last week. Can Berkeley Springs pull off that upset? Unfortunately not. I don't think so. North Marion's going to come in bigger, stronger. I just think they're too much for Berkeley Springs. And now we travel to Inwood, Musselman. One of the top-ranked teams in the state, really solid this year, playing a Morgantown team whose record may not make them seem like they're as good as they are. They've played a team from Pennsylvania and a team from Ohio, and they lost last week to Martinsburg 51-7. to So they may be reeling a little bit. Jacob Northcraft leads the area for Musselman with 474 yards. Really solid offensive uh, rushing attack for Musselman. What happens in Inwood tonight? Morgantown not feeling very excited about tonight's game. Traveling, long trip up to Inwood. Um, it's also Musman's homecoming week. I see Musman winning a two-score game. And now the game everyone really cares about tonight. Hedgesville and Preston. Preston coming in, like I said, 1-4. and four. Hedgesville 4-1. Four and one. Jason Plotner. There was some questions on whether he'd start tonight, but he is getting the ball, we believe. Uh, leads the state, actually, with 1,341 yards. He's got some great targets tonight. Year Smith, Malachi Brown, Chase DeLauder, new to the team. Yes. Big target, Hunter Coe, all of those guys. What do you think happens here tonight in Muma Stadium in front of a Hedgesville crowd? I think Plotner has a big night throwing for four-plus touchdowns. Preston's just not skilled enough on both sides of the ball. They look like they're missing their starting quarterback as well. So um, at the end of the night, I think Hedgesville is going to pull this one out. Give it that to you. Go ahead. There you have it, folks. Tyler Bubb with the headgear selection of the Eagles. All right, we are just about 20 minutes away from kickoff. Pretty good night here. Crowd's filling in. Preston has some fans traveling out. How are you feeling in there? I'm feeling great. <laughs> All right. All right, some stats we were looking at earlier. Like I said, Jason leads the state in passing yards. He's got some really good receivers. Nigeria Smith leads this Eagle defense with 47 and a half tackles. We've got some playmakers to watch tonight. Yes, um, Hedgesville's best will perform well tonight. And if Preston can't stop the offense and Plotner limits turnovers, yeah, the offense can be really successful tonight. Right, and we were watching Preston warm up. We were looking for their quarterback, Dakota Holt. Didn't see him out there. Didn't see if he was in a jersey or on the sidelines. So the question of Preston's quarterback is still up in the air. Do you think that will have any effect on their game tonight? I mean, Dakota coming into this game, 309 rushing yards, 410 passing yards, really solid dual threat quarterback. If he's not in, we I don't know if Preston has any real shot in this game. We'll see if the coaches affected the game plan, changed it. Maybe they knew something Hedgesville didn't know. But I think the defense will be ready for it. Uh, we are about to start the Hall of Fame ceremony here at Hedgesville. We'll see if we can get that to you here in a couple minutes.
Penny is unfortunately unable to be with us tonight, but she is being represented by her softball coach, Bill Sparky Anderson. A 1980 graduate of Hedgesville High School, Penny was an outstanding softball player, playing on the varsity team for three years. As a starting pitcher, Penny won 37 games and established several records, such as most wins without a loss and most no-hitters. She was named to the first team by state league in 1978, 1979, and 1980. In 1979, Penny was selected MVP of the Bi-State League, and in 1980 was selected MVP and top pitcher in the Tri-County area. Penny continued playing softball and furthering her education at Shepherd University, where she graduated summa cum laude in 1984 and was a McMurrin Scholar. She received her Master's of Accountancy from Virginia Tech in 1985, graduating magna cum laude. Ladies and gentlemen, Penny Walburn. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the 2017 Hedgesville High School Athletic Hall of Fame induction class. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and go Eagles.
you're in charge of rosters, seeing if you can figure out who tackles who fast enough. What? Come on, dude. You're the experienced one. I gotta do stats. go back on I'll be like sorry for that technical difficulty what what's going on all right there we go about to go on just so yeah, I'll, I'll turn it back up in a second Technically on us. I need to turn it back up. Alright, got it. Yeah, I need to make my AD connect. Phone down. Whoa. Ready? Go. Alright, ready? Three, two. Alright, we are going to apologize for that little technical difficulty. I understand the National Anthem and Hall of Fame ceremony didn't exactly come in clearly. We will hope that nothing else goes wrong for the rest of this broadcast, but we are back with you now, live here at Muma Stadium, home of the Hedgesville Eagles. And we are about five minutes away from kickoff, and Tyler. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited for this four-game home stretch we're about to start. Starting night with Preston, leading into our homecoming game next week against Musselman. We will be broadcasting that one. You and I will not be on that call. We will let you know who's on that one shortly. And then following up with Martinsburg and then senior night with Hampshire. And then we will end our regular season with, at, with a game at Spring Mills. How do you think we can keep this momentum from the first five games starting 4-1 and one? into this home stretch and hopefully perform well in front of these Eagle fans? Well, the fans are huge. Um, a lot of excitement you know, around the school building up. The community is excited for the team. Um, take one game at a time. If they win this one, everyone gets more excited for next week. Um, captains are coming out now. Right, and the thing is now is, is we're starting to get closer to playoff time. It means each game is more and more important. So if the Eagles win this one tonight, they're guaranteed a 500 or better record for the season. And currently they are ranked sixth by the West Virginia Secondary Schools Activities Commission for high school playoff football, which would mean we would actually host a first-round playoff game. It would be the first in a while, as you see Preston coming onto the field.
Right now the captains are at midfield doing the coin toss. Just under four minutes to go. Some key players to watch in this game. Obviously, Jason Plotner, the quarterback, will l hopefully have a, one of his better games tonight. He's kind of been back and forth, but his stats, his stat line is impressive. 82 completions on 161 attempts, leading the state with 1,341 yards. 12 touchdowns is tied for the area with Martinsburg Tyson Bajan. His one blemish is, in fact, those nine interceptions as the Eagles rush onto the field now. But anyway, back to Jason. Nine interceptions, really big blemish. He's going to have to limit those to keep the Eagles in the game. They've find, found ways to overcome it, except in that one loss to South Hagerstown, where just six turnovers, you can't come back from that. Yeah, he definitely has the receivers and the running game to be successful. He gets a few passes going, you know, start the game early. He feels confident. Offensive line blocks for him well. He should play well tonight against a struggling Preston defense. Exactly. He's completing 50% of his passes, not the best completion rate at, you want from your starter. So we'll see how he plays tonight. And we are getting ready for football here in Hedgesville High School. We actually have the late game tonight. All the other games have started a couple, about a half hour ago. We have the late game at 7.30. And it looks like Preston will receive the opening kickoff, which means Hedgesville will get the ball to start the second half. And we will see this Hedgesville defense on the field first tonight. Beautiful night for some football. Clear skies, little wind. This is just a gorgeous day yes, today. Yes, yes. Finnegan is on. Finnegan Hall is on for the kickoff, the Eagles kicker. And he has really come alive, giving the Eagles a second option if they get into fourth and short territory. They trust him with his big leg to go kick kick some field goals this season four kickoffs he's got <clears throat> excuse me he's got 28 kickoffs and he averages about 53 yards a kick and nine touchbacks so we'll see if he can pin these Preston Knights back early as we are getting ready for the start of football here in Hedgesville West Virginia And we are underway here in Moomaw Stadium with a short kick bouncing, fielded at about the 13. Looking for a lane. He's got one. And he will be wrestled down at about the 35-yard line. We'll be able to see first look at what looks to be the quarterback, Rosenberg. Rosenberg. The, game, or the scouting report coming into this game was that the quarterback, Dakota Holt, would be the main man for the Preston offense tonight. But he's not on the field. We don't know if he's injured. He hasn't. I haven't seen a jersey number 10 on their sideline. But Colton Rosenberger, a sophomore quarterback, 5'8", 147, gets the nod for the Knights to start this game as they begin their first drive of the game on the 35-yard line. Quick inside handoff right away and stopped in the backfield. Solid start for the defense of the Eagles. About a gain of one on the play. Really no holes for the running back to find. Gage Abrek with the stop. He is second on the team in tackles. Good start for this defense. Man coverage on the far sideline. Hunter Coe back there with Nate Pompali and two receivers on near side. Toss blown up by Jesse Kane and the Eagle defense in the backfield for a loss of two. On a third and long, they must be passing the ball. We're going to see if Rosenberger can throw. He looked pretty solid in warm-ups. We'll see if his offensive coordinator trusts him here. Looked pretty mobile, too, on the run. We'll see what defense calls. I think they'll blitz or play zone. It looks to be zone, but there is no one on a receiver for Preston. Now Jesse Kane, nope. Nigeria Smith walks over to him. Drops back on the Wilson run. right. Pass is completed, but he will not make the first down. 
It would be fourth and five. David Record with the reception. About a gain, maybe six, five or six, and it will be fourth down. And the Knights will punt to the dangerous Malachi Brown and Niger Smith. Malachi has a, no, excuse me, Niger has a punt return for a touchdown. Um, Niger, Malachi has a kickoff return. Short oh. punt, not a good one. It will take a Preston bounce, and it will be downed at about the 35. So nothing really, pretty good field position to start for these Eagles as their starting offense trots onto the field, led by quarterback Jason Plotner. And we will see how this Eagle defense begins. Or offense, excuse me. Good starting field position for the Eagles. We'll see how they start. Maybe get a few easy passes for Plotner. Really get settled into the game. He's in a shotgun, five, five receivers on the field. He's got three on the near sideline, two on the far side. He's alone by himself in the backfield. Defense showing blitz as they jump, but not offsides. And Jason Audible is at the line of scrimmage. Screen pass to Devin Heath. Gets past the first man, and he's got blockers. Throws a man at the 50 for the first down, Eagles. What a good start for Jason and his offense. Really good blocks by Hunter Coe and Najir Smith to open him up on the outside. A little bit, no 16, huddle. Yep, quick offense. Got four receivers on this near sideline. 16-yard gain. He's got chased a lot of man coverage. Another screen to Malachi Brown. Gets away from the first man, and he's down the sideline. He's got it away. And he could go. Give him six. He finds the checkered board. The Eagles score on their second play of the game. A 50-yard touchdown pass for Jason Plotner. What a start for this Eagle offense. Couldn't have gone much better for the Eagle offense. Plotner's going to find his rhythm, and Finnegan Hall is on to take the PAT. What a start. It lined up four men on the near side. Malachi catches the screen. He's got blockers in front of him. He's got an easy lane to the end zone. Kick is up, it's good. So with just two plays, the Eagles go 65 yards for the quick score. And now with 10 minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter, the Eagles are up 7 to nothing on these Preston Knights. So the Eagles will give the ball back to the Knights after they went three and out on their first possession. If you're the Knights, as we said earlier, their keys of the game are to score early and score often. That is not what you wanted to see, a quick two-play drive by the Eagles to start this game. Yeah, it's really going to put Rosenberg at a tough spot. He's going to have to throw, throw for completions, really start driving. Back to receive the kick for Preston. We have David Rockhart and Tucker Kinzel and Finnegan Hall will try to pin them deep to start their second possession of the night. This time he gets his foot into it and he's going to drive the uh, returners back and that's the end of the end zone for a touchback. What a kick by Finnegan Hall. Yes. He's really improved from last year. They give him more chances and you can tell by the greeting he got from his coaches down there. He, they are excited for him. So the Knights will begin their second drive of the game on the 20 on their own 20 yard line. We'll see if they can get anything started here. Jaron Summers in the backfield with Rosenberg to begin this second drive. Hand off to Summers, and he has stopped for little to no gain, if any. Maybe lost a yard there. Summers on the carry. No gain on the play. 
if they can't get any good runs going, Rosenberg's really going to be tested. He's going to have to find ways to make completions and sustain long drives. On the far side, we've got man coverage, Hunter Coe covering Nate Pompali. And on this side, we've got trips on the near sideline. Summers again in the backfield with Rosenberg. It looks to be a pass play. Drops back, rolling to his left. No one there. He's going to tuck it and run. Tuck it and run. Oh. Stopped and driven all the way back by Zara Paris. He rips the ball out, but the referees say he was down. A good stop and push back by Parrish. I will, interesting to see where they're going to spot this. It looks like they're going to give him a two-yard gain for third and eight. Rosenberg seems to be smart. He didn't have anybody there. He just tucked it and ran. It looked like he was going to get about a four or five-yard gain until Parrish threw him back. And we have, and the Knights have their second third down and long of the game. And our third and long looks to be a pass play passing situation he drops back fires over the middle oh, caught wow and hung on to after smoot delivers the big hit first down knights hunter lance with the reception and rosenberg's second completion of the night flag on the play though a sideline warning on preston interesting first flag of the game Coaches on Preston's side can't be too happy about that. Maybe a little momentum killer, but here we go. Still finally, first down. Finally got a little bit of juice flowing, got past the 30 <laughs> this time. Summers again now in motion with Rosenberger in the backfield. He's going to drop back to pass again, and he's going to tuck it and run, and he is taken down at the line of scrimmage. Michael Turner. Michael Turner with the stop. That was a design run. It didn't work very well. Um, looked like the receivers were just going four verticals. Didn't really run any routes. What I've seen so far from these Preston Knights, they keep three receivers on the near sideline closest to us and one in man coverage on the far sideline. Honestly, if I were them, I wouldn't test Hunter Coe, but he's beaten off the line. But oh, he throws pick. an interception to Malachi Brown, and he's going to take it for a score. Easy pick six for the Eagles, and now... Not what Preston wanted to see. A two-score game before the first quarter is even over. Had to be an offensive breakdown. Receiver and the quarterback were not on the same page. Left Malachi Brown easy for an open touchdown. That is his second interception of the year. And honestly, this is an impressive stat. He's got two interceptions now, both pick sixes. So pretty good start for the Eagles on defense and offense and a pretty good start for Malachi Brown as he's got now an offensive and defensive touchdown as Finnegan Hall adds the extra point and with the Eagles second score of the game they have now pushed the lead to 14 to 0 easy start for the Eagles here it seemed as though Preston was gaining a little momentum but Hedgesville really just took it away with an easy pick six not what you want to see if you're on that Preston sideline. Kinzel back deep for the Knights as Finnegan Hall will kick off here. Keeps it away from Kinzel. It will be fielded at about the two. Struggled a little bit with it. And hit and taken down by a Breck. We'll see if Pre Preston changes anything on offense. It yep. seems to be that they're doing short, trying to get a short passing game started to see if they can break anything open. Nothing really going their way right now. And they're just trying to get the quarterback comfortable. So far, 
their plan hasn't worked too much. We'll see how they change this drive. Yes, we believe that he may have been thrown into the start as Dakota Holt, their original quarterback, the one we had in our scouting report as the man to watch for this Preston offense. He is not on the field. He is not. We don't even know if he's on the sideline as Rosenberg takes a designed run up and tackled by his shoelace by Jesse Kane for about a five-yard gain. Another second and medium play. We'll see if they try to gain a few yards to make a more manageable third down possible as they can get a drive going. Summers in the backfield with Rosenberger. You're going to give it off to him. He's up the middle. He's got the first. Oh, maybe he doesn't have the first down. As Devin Heath comes up and makes a stop, it'll be close. Let's see if they, they, like will, they'll give him the first they down. will give him the first down. Good blocking up front. Really open up a nice hole for Summers to get in there and move the sticks. Be first down for Preston on their own 31. Another oh a option to oh, wow. from Rosenberg to Summers and he's he may go and a Breck makes a touchdown saving tackle this at one, the 49. This one might be coming back though. It might be a hold on Preston. There is a flag on the play. And it is on the Knights, as that will bring back their longest play from scrimmage tonight. A really well-designed play. The entire Eagles defense bit on the handoff, the fake handoff. And Rosenberger had a clear lane to the end zone before Abrek made this stop. A possible touchdown saving tackle, but now it won't matter, as that holding penalty will bring them back all the way to their own 28-yard line. Twenty-three yard line, excuse me, and now the line to gain on first and nineteen is the forty-one. And it seems the Knights are remaining to do this or continue to do this formation. About the, it looks like the pistol formation with Rosenberg and Summers in the backfield. Bad snap, snap, handled well, bounces off one tackle and can't get away from Heath as he brings him down at about the line of scrimmage. Eagles are really filling up the box, going to make Rosenberg pass. To make first downs. Yes, the run game is the run game is not working for the Knights right now. As it was a loss of three, so second and second and long here. We'll see if they try to maybe do a quick screen, maybe a slant, get themselves in a more manageable third down scenario. Two receivers on each side of the field. Rosenberg drops back, looking, fires a ball up for grabs. Jesse Kane's there. Nigier Smith with his sixth interception of the year. He now averages an interception a game, came into this game with five. He has really been a star on this defensive squad for the Eagles, and that is Rosenberg's second interception of the night. Really gives the Eagles good field possession to start this next drive. They're starting on their own on uh, the Knights 45 yard line. Double man formation on each side of the field with a man behind, two receivers lined up. Oh, As the defense it. jumped, yep. I didn't know if they were gonna call it. It was kind of a late call, but that'll give the Eagles a first and five and the Knights second penalty of the night. Really a bad penalty for the Knights as they're getting closer and making it a more manageable first down chance. And if you're the Eagles, you really want to score here and really put this game out of reach early and not even give Preston a chance here in this game. Jason has Smoot in the backfield with him. It's a quick little, little toss to him. He's got blockers. Nigeria Smith, one man to beat, cuts it up the middle, and he is wrestled down at the 15 for a big gain. Good run by Smoot there. Michael Turner really opened up that right side with a good block on the outside linebacker. Flag on the play, though. Probably a hold. Block in the back. They're going to give him the first down. 
just bring that run back a little bit. That penalty might have been on higher code block on the outside. Really aggressive, good size on an undersized corner. Yes, it's very clear that these Eagles receivers have quite the height advantage on the Preston defense. We'll see if Plotner throws a fade up to code. Maybe let him jump up for the ball and get it. Oh, mishailed snap. Picks it up, throws it, it up to Hunter Coe in the end zone. Oh. And he couldn't bring it down. It was a nice recovery by Plotner as he tried to make something out of nothing. Had a man downfield. Hunter couldn't just bring that one in. He had the corner beat. Safety was helping. Safety was late on that play. All he had to do was drop it in the basket. He did a good job. I think Hunter was just couldn't bring that one down. They're running back in the backfield for the Eagles. Yeah, bunch set up here. A little screen to Heath. Tries to beat the first man and is gang tackled Maybe at the 30. Gain of four probably. So the Eagles will have their first third down situation. It's a third and manageable for the Eagles. You do have Finnegan Hall as a good kicker who could kick from about this distance. He does have one from 44 yards this year. He's two and four on the season, but I don't think that's anything to look too much into as all the kickers in the area each have two field goals. As they hand it off to Smoot to try to get the first down, and he will be stopped close. short. He's about a yard short, so let's see what the Eagles do. It doesn't seem like they're going to bring the offense off the field. It'll be fourth and one. Both Keenan and Aiden Smoot in the backfield, and a timeout is called by Preston. And now we'll see if Hedgesville keeps their offense on the field or they let Hall try for a chip shot. Coach for Preston must have not liked what he saw out of their formation, so he called a timeout. Probably a smart timeout. Maybe his team defense is a little tired. They've been out there more than they probably would want to this early in the game. This is the Eagles' third drive. Actually, second drive, excuse me, as they didn't get a chance as Malachi pick, had the pick six. It's a big play, too. If the Eagles make this first down, convert on fourth down, you know, you like their chances to score a touchdown as they've been driving all game. Exactly. And if on the other side, if Preston stops this fourth down, they maybe gain some momentum, some momentum and hopefully, well, not hopefully, but for them, hopefully, they can make that into a drive and maybe put some pressure on this Hedgesville defense. He's really handled them well all night. Offense stay on the field. Nigeria Smith is in man coverage on the far sideline. Both Aiden and Keenan Smoot still in the backfield with Plotner, so it looks to be the same formation they had before the timeout, and they're going to hand it to Keenan, a flag, or excuse me, Aiden. A flag is thrown, so this one might be coming back. Oh. And there's another flag away from the play as, Pre as a Preston defender threw the Hedgesville lineman who was downfield. EJ Heath. These may offset. That second flag on the play might have been retaliation, a little anger, frustration, and Hurley as Preston. It's not where they want to be right now. Looks like the foul's offset. A face mask on the defense. They do offset, and it, they, we will replay fourth and short. Still the same formation for the Eagles. Let's see if they run the same play. Preston showing oh, blitz, and that'll be a false start. start. And now the Eagles really have a decision to make. Finnegan's going to chase the lotter checking into the game for the Eagles, but it looks like they are still going to go for it. Looked like that last play was going to be a run play as 
the Eagles have been liking what they've been seeing with the offensive push. And now you gotta wonder if Jason Potter just takes the shot for the end zone here. Ball on their own 20, or the press in 29 yard line as he rolls, throws, got Hunter Coe again, short ball, can't Ooh. come down with it. And all the fans and the bench want pass interference, but the Eagles will turn it over on downs and a good stop for the Preston Knights as maybe they can stay in this game. Good coverage by Tucker Nissel. Keeping Coast using the sideline as another defender. We'll see if Preston can find any momentum after that fourth down stop. So the Knights will take over on their own 29 yard line. Summers back there with Rosenberger again. Seems to be their go-to formation. Eagles bringing the pressure and Summers has nowhere to go as he is thrown to the ground by Aiden Smoot for a loss of one. So far it looks like the Eagles are gonna make Rosenberg beat them through the air as they're filling the box putting a lot of blitzes into the mix. Yeah, it looked like they had about eight men rush and kept the safeties on islands by themselves. They really trust their defense, and they should, as they've already forced two interceptions. Like I said, Niger average, now averages one a game as he's gotten his sixth of the year here in this sixth game. Bit of an eye formation, but... Rosen is coming. And Jesse Kane threw the blocker out of the way for a huge sack of Rosenberg. What a play by the junior. If you're a Preston's coach, this is not where you want to be. A third and long, you don't have many plays in the playbook to call to be successful on this type of play. I don't know if you saw, but I was talking to Jesse. I had the stats earlier in the week, and I was telling him he's he used to lead this team in tackles, but now he's fourth on the team. And after he got that big sack, he threw up a four to let everyone know that he still knows where he is, where he's at, and he's working on his game. Third and 23 for the Knights. He's going to throw a slant. And it is oh, wrestled away oh. and taken back by Preston. This should be an interesting call. It looked like Javen, excuse me, Javen had picked that ball off. They're going to say it's fourth down. They're going to give him the completion as he wrestled that ball away from the Eagle defense. Nice play by Tucker Nitzel playing the defensive role. Really saves on field position. And Preston will trot out its punting unit for the second time, and they're going to kick it away to Niger Smith and Malachi Brown. Eagles rush man on late. Quick substitution. Short kick. And they're going to let it bounce. It's going to take another press and roll into Hedgesville territory, and it's going to be down at about the 43. The Eagles, again, will have amazing field position to start another drive, and they will try to tack on some more points before the first quarter ends. We are about at 1 minute and 46 seconds away from this first quarter closing. Still no scoreboard? Can't figure it out? Okay. I'll keep saying it. All right. So far in this first quarter, Hedgesville is doing everything they wanted to achieve. Preston, they're really playing from behind now. Really have to change what they're thinking of coming into the game. Interesting formation here. A huge screenplay to Niger Smith. He's got nothing. He's going to try to reverse fields. He's really crafty at this. Possible block in the back that they didn't call. He oh, There is a flag now, and he ran into his own man. And... Not the play you wanted to see. Niger Smith is one of the better receivers on this team. He can really make something out of nothing. He tried there, but couldn't. And this one probably will have some yards taken back, as there was a block on the back, block in the back by Corbin Franklin late on that play. Coach Urs wanted to give one of his more elite playmakers, Niger Smith, a chance to make a long play. And Maybe score a touchdown, use their size to their advantage and to block pressing defenders. He's done it before, just couldn't. There was nothing really for him to do there. Once 
Must be a huge loss as the, they are still trying to spot this ball. We'll see where... It looks like they put it on the 23, making the yard to gain the Preston 47-yard line. Second and 30 here for the Eagles. We'll see if the Eagles try to get some of those yards back to make it more manageable. Third Screen down. to Smith. Got one, one man to beat. Jukes around him. Gets away from him. A broken tackle, and he could go, and this is what I was talking about, folks. He stepped... Looked like he stepped out. That is what I was talking about. The ability to make a play from nothing into something as he makes a huge gain out of a quick screen that may have been able to be blown up in the backfield. A 52-yard pickup on second and 30. Smoot in the backfield with Plotner. They're going to fake it to him. Another screen to Malachi Brown. Quick move. Runs the inside. Break. Tries to break to the outside, but is taken down by Colton Rosenberger, the quarterback who's playing defense. And a good start for Jason Potter. He's 5 for 7 with a touchdown already, and he's going to try to add to those totals. Let's see if the Eagles get a playoff before this first quarter ends. Looks like they're content to take it into the second quarter. And as time runs out on this first quarter of play, the Eagles lead the Preston Knights 14 to nothing and are driving again. A good first quarter for the Eagles. If I'm Coach Yours, I'm happy with my team. Both sides of the ball. Jason is throwing the ball effectively, getting it to his playmakers. Already a 50-yard touchdown pass to Malachi Brown. A 52-yard gain we just saw a second ago by... Uh, Nigeria Smith, 5 for 7 to start the night. Solid. And then on defense, the Eagles choking, choking the Knights' run game and trying to force Rosenberger to throw. He's got two picks already. Really solid start by these Eagles. Plotner's got to feel confident. Limited turnovers, really driving, finding his receivers, getting good blocks from the offensive line. And when they've been able to run the ball, they've been pretty successful at it. So as we switch fields now, the Eagles will be on the 17-yard line. Second quarter will begin with a handoff to Smoot. He's trying to get it. He does break it inside the 10, maybe to about the six yard line. Good run by Smoot there. The Eagles are bringing in number 61 to Thayle Hughes, probably for a run play. Heavy package. A direct snap. Seems like Preston had it covered well. Maybe a two-yard gain as it'll be second down from the four. Reverse hit off. Plotner keeps it. Rose, and it is complete to Javen Wilmer for his second touchdown pass of the game. Really good play call. Finnegan Hall on to attempt the extra point. And it is up and it is good. And the Eagles with 11 minutes and 16 seconds left in the second quarter 
push the lead to 21 to zip. When do you think Preston finally calls it quits and starts playing some of their inexperienced players? I think it'll be a while. They're going to try to stick around here. They're, I do think they will need to start throwing the ball more effectively here soon. Their run game is just totally blocked by the Eagles rushing at least seven or eight guys at play. Another deep kick by Finnegan Hall. Going to be fielded on, on a bounce at about the two. And he is hit and dragged down at the nine-yard line. By John Stamball. What a hit by the senior. Really good kickoff coverage by the Eagles. So once again, the Knights will start with poor field position as they begin this drive on the nine yard line. Let's see if the Eagles bring pressure and try to maybe force a safety or a fumble out of this and set themselves up nicely. An audible at the line of scrimmage by Rosenberger. He's going to drop back and pass a slant, and he throws it into the ground. No chance for his receiver to get that one. Rosenberger's lacking confidence right now. Not really comfortable with his offensive line protection. Just shows he's flustered, doesn't know what to do as they can't get a run game going. Second and ten from the nine on the Near sideline, Hunter Co is in man coverage. A run to Summers up the middle, and it's going to be stopped for no gain. So third and long again for the Knights. This Eagles defense has really stepped up here tonight. Now we're third and long for the Knights. Receivers all out wide, a rolling play, and he's in the end zone. Got to get out of it, and that's going to be a safety. Or they're going to call it a horse collar attacker. Stamball dragged him down by his jersey. Looked to be a big play for the Eagles, but that one might cost them a little bit. Crowd's not going to like that one. Right now, it's still 21-0, but after that penalty, it'll make it a first down on the 15. I formation lining up for the Knights. Official... Some confusion on the field. Official timeout as they're resetting the chains. Another 
The Knights called their second timeout. So the horse collar penalty is going to be taken off. It'll be third and short for the Knights. It did kill some momentum. It looked like he may have escaped Stanball in the end zone, but Stanball just grabbed him by the jersey and threw him down. And one of the Eagles' only penalties of the night. The Eagles are able to stop this third and short. You have to look at uh, the playmakers. Smith and Brown have a chance to return this one back. Keep it in between the hash marks, get a few blocks down the field, and it might be taken back to the house. Third and five from their own 15. The Knights have trips on the near side and man coverage on the far side of the field. He's going to drop back, quick pass, screen or slant, excuse me, caught. And that may be enough for the first down as Summers reeled that one in. It was behind him a little bit. Nice play by Summers. Those types of plays really help your quarterback settle in get some confidence in his receivers, be able to trust them to throw the ball to him. Right now, if my stats are correct, I have Rosenberger at four for six, meaning his only incompletions have been the two interceptions he's thrown, but both of those have led to scores for the Eagles. So if maybe he can get in a rhythm, get some momentum, get this Preston Knights offense moving downfield, they can maybe get a score and get closer or back into this game. So he's going to roll to his left, flushed out of the pocket, and taken down by Dylan Branner. <laughs> Excuse me. He got the pass off, and it looks like it will not be intentional grounding. Solid rush by the Eagle defense as they flushed him out of the pocket and gang tackled him in the backfield. They've tried rolling him to the right. They've tried rolling him to the left. Nothing's really working for this Preston Knights offense. Summers again with Rosenberg in the backfield. It's another pass, another blitz. Picked up a little bit. Oh, there's a, there a, a couple. Mask. A lot of flags on this play. Definitely a face mask. Rosenberg are trying to make something out of nothing. But it won't really matter as that penalty is going to give the Knights a first down. It's really tough for Rosenberger to have confidence in his offensive line when the Eagles are dialing up pressure and getting to him effectively. An obvious face mask as his head whipped around. Referee's quick to call it. And there's another flag on the far side of the field. I didn't see what was going on over there. They may have been a hold. If that's the case, these penalties may offset. We'll get the call now. Face mask on the Eagles and second down. There was apparently every referee saw that one and they all agree. And that one's going to move the chains. It's not going to move the chains, but it'll make it a more manageable second down for the Knights as they seem to be lining up in an I formation. Be second and short, probably a run play. Let's see if the Eagles bring pressure. They seem to be loading up the box. Only two receivers out wide, and now a third comes near side to us. Hand off to Summers. It's blown up in the backfield by Smoot. Gain about two. Another third and short. So another third down for these Knights. Let's see what they do. Third and more manageable than they've been in. Third and one. Still got receivers out. I would expect a run play here. Maybe even try to sneak one up the middle with the quarterback. Eagles showing blitz. They're going to hand it off to Summers and he will make the first down as Abrek was the man to get him down, but not after the Knights move the chains. The Knights put in a fullback, number 30, Caleb Gribble, which helped stop the uh, 
Rush. Eagles bringing in Michael Turner and Ethan Faircloth, some bigger defensive linemen, to get in those trenches and maybe stop this drive. Looks to be a little bit of confusion on the Preston side. Rosenberg drops back to pass, flushed out of the pocket again. He's going to tuck it and run. He's got nobody, but he's going to make something out of nothing. And he is shoved out of bounds by Hunter Coe, but hops up quickly. Pretty good run by Rosenberger there. Definitely woke him up a little bit. Next time he should probably slide so he doesn't take another big hit from well, one of the Eagle defenders. He tried to get out of bounds, but Hunter Coe just has closing speed and made sure he got knocked to the ground on that play. Seven-yard gain as the Knights are finally moving the ball with some confidence here. Help aided by the penalty on standball and the face mask call a couple plays ago. Four receivers for the Knights. They call a timeout, didn't like what they saw. Actually, the play clock was running out, and that's their last time out of the half. So for the last eight minutes of this second quarter and this first half, the Knights will have to manage the clock on their own with no timeouts as the score stands 21-0 to zero with 7.59 remaining in this first half. Probably a drive, maybe a drive killer right there as they were finally moving the ball with some gusto and some momentum and then they have to burn their last time out because they weren't set, and the play clock was about, I think, maybe three seconds. Rosenberger either didn't like what he saw, or he might have been feeling the effect of that hit on the sideline. He got hit hard by Hunter Co. I'll have to give it to Rosenberger, though, for being, we assume, thrown into this start. He's done the most he can do to this point. He's not liking what he sees. The coverage from the defense of the Eagles is pretty solid, so he has to make some plays out of nothing. He's running the ball a little bit, getting maybe hyping up his team in that huddle over there, trying to get them to get in this game a little bit. Another I formation with Gribble and Summers in the backfield. And Rosenberger under center. And they're going to give it to Gribble up the middle, and he's going to be stopped by Michael Turner, the first man to greet him. Daniel Hughes took him down on the play. It'll be another third and short, probably about a yard away from the achievement first down. The Preston coaches, oh, they're going to give him the first down. A little bit of confusion. Official timeout. They're going to measure it. No, they're going to give it to him. First down, Knights. Time about school. Like this one? So after that first down, the Knights will have possession on the 44 yard line trying to get past midfield for the first time tonight. Eagles again showing blitz, a lot of pressure tonight from the defense. Rosenberger's gonna run, and he is tripped up for about a two yard gain. A lot of runs on this drive. They seem to be figuring out their run game a little bit. They've got three receivers up top. He drops back, going to throw it over the middle, and a nice grab by Summers as he hauled that one in with one hand for a, about a three-yard gain. This brings up third and four.
Rosenberger in the shotgun, drops back, trying to go deep. Man coverage, he's got his man, and he drops it in the basket, and there's a flag thrown as Malachi th shoves him out of bounds. And now there's a bit of jawing as Kinzel caught that pass as it was placed beautifully in his hands by Rosenberg. The biggest play of the night for the Knights. We'll see what the flag was. I didn't see anything, uh, maybe a face mask, but Malachi did shove him out of bounds kind of hard, but the flag came in after, or before that, excuse me. Could have been an offensive pass interference call, and that may be after the play on sportsmanlike conduct on Brown. They were both jawing with each other. Brown had something to say after he threw him to the ground. If it is an offensive pass interference call, that would neglect a big gain. Biggest gain for Preston tonight. I didn't see anything that would make it offensive pass interference, but we'll see what happens with this call. And they are walking back, so Bub, you might be right on that offensive call. And it was offensive pass interference. Good eye out there, Tyler. But there was another penalty on the Eagles, and I guess they offset, and we're going to replay that down. I didn't see what the call was on the Eagles. Coach Urich doesn't like that call. He wants an explanation from the official. And he's going to call timeout and talk it over with his team. That's rough for these Knights as they had their biggest play from scrimmage. A beautiful pass dropped into the basket of Kinzel, and he almost shook away Brown for a touchdown. You know, Preston was feeling confident. Maybe could have gotten a late score in the second quarter. That just kills all the momentum. Really, really bad position for Preston. Still be a third and four though. So if they can get this first down, keep another drive going, more confidence into the fans from Preston and the offense. Even though that play doesn't count, you have to think for the Preston sideline, seeing your quarterback make that kind of play, it's got to give you some hope that, hey, we're not totally out of this game. If we just control the ball, manage our drives well, we can get back in this game. And I'm sure Holt on the sidelines helping Rosenberger any way he can. You know Holt wants to be out there, but for some reason he just isn't. So when this game started and the Eagles scored in just two plays, it looked like this game was going to be a blowout and a high-scoring affair for the Eagles. But now scoring has really stopped for the Eagles as it is only 21 zip right now. They scored early in the second quarter, but nothing since then. They're trying to keep pressing out of this game. Coach Jurich must have not liked something called on the field. He's laughing to himself in disbelief. It'll be a third and short for Preston. A fake handoff. Rosenberger trying to do something with it, but he's going to be swallowed in the backfield by Hughes and a bunch of other Eagle defenders. Looks like they'll bring on the punting unit. Preston was able to get a yard or two on that play. Maybe they keep the offense on the field, but it looks like they'll punt. We're going to try to pin Nigeria Smith back, but the punts so far tonight have not been going very far. As you can tell, Niger is not that far back as he is just about on his 25. That one's almost blocked, honestly. And that one's going to take a Hedgesville bounce and roll back towards midfield and will be down at the 36-yard line. It has to be tough for this pressing defense. The Hedgesville offense has been playing pretty well so far, but after a short punt, it's just tough for Preston to make stops. And you can't really ask the Preston defense to do much more. They struggled in the first quarter, giving up two quick scores. But now, after just one score here in the second, they seem to have gotten into their defensive rhythm and stopped the Eagles on their last few drives. 
Eagles have had a good starting field position each drive, starting about their own 40. Plotner drops back. He's got Malachi deep, running open, and Malachi may have saved an interception as he tipped, jumped for that ball. Solid effort by Brown. But it looked like that ball may have carried into the defender's hands. Good coverage by the safety, Kinsel. Deep ball to start the drive, something you don't normally see from the Eagle offense. You do see the deep ball, that's for sure, but not to start off a drive. They try to get the run game started normally. We might see that here with Aiden Smoot in the backfield. It's going to be a pitch to him. He's got some blockers. He's going to hit the hole. He's got the first down. A flag comes in late. It was good blocking by DeLauder and Ethan Faircloth. Really opened up the hole. It's going to be taken back, though, blocking the back. Block in the back is going to be called on Ethan Faircloth. Looked like he made a good block and the defender just fell over. Well, they had the officials fooled. I didn't see the black. I was watching the ball carrier. But that's going to make it second, or excuse me, third and 12. Second and 12 from their own 34-yard line. Plotter rolls, trying to find someone downfield. He's going to throw it back across the field. Brown's got it. And he's going to get away from the defender. He's got one man blocking for him. He's trying to cut it back across the field. Spins out of the tackle, and he's still on his feet. And he's wow. going to walk into the end zone. What a play by Malachi Brown. That play was blown up. Potter wanted to go on the far sideline, had some men, didn't want to throw it there, threw it back across the field. And Brown just worked his magic after that. What a touchdown for the Eagles. Really good job by Plotner, expanding the play, giving a chance for his wide receiver to go up and make a play, and then Brown did the rest. That's Brown's second receiving touchdown, and he's got a pick six tonight, so he's really doing it all for the Eagles. And the extra point is up and good, making the score with four minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the game. The Hedgesville Eagles 28, Preston Knight zero. And if the Eagles on defense can force another three and out, you also have to question if the Eagles are going to be able to score right going four into the half. Cheerleaders are doing push-ups. They're going to have a lot more to do by the end of the night. That is for sure. Jason Plotter, three touchdown passes tonight, two to Malachi Brown, both over 50 yards. Honestly, I thought Malachi was down at about the 15 when he spun out of it. He's really crafty, and he, like Nigeria Smith, can make something out of nothing. He made the first tackler miss, got a few blocks from his receivers, and then he just did the rest. Really explosive. After his two touchdown receptions tonight, he's now tied for the lead on the team with Nigeria Smith, each having five. And Finnegan will kick this one deep. Going to be fielded at about the eight-yard line. He's got a lane. Can he hit it? And a Breck blows him up with the help of a Rendy at about the 35-yard line. Good return by... We don't have his number on here. Let's go with John Doe for the rest of the game. <laughs> Decent start field position for the Knights. We'll see what they do going into the half. Do you think they run the ball and try to get out of the first half, or do you think they try to go for the points? If I'm the Eagles, or not the Eagles, the Knights, excuse me, I would try to get something out of this drive as Rosenberger takes off after a broken play and he's got a lane and he brings it into Eagle territory at about the 45. Look to pass, 
and was flushed out of the pocket. A 21-yard run by Rosenberger. And as I was saying, I, if I'm the Knights, I try to get some points out of this drive because the Eagles will receive the ball at the start of the second half, and you don't want to be down four scores and giving them the ball back to start the second half. If I am pressing, you need to get in the end zone on this drive. Rosenberg drops back again, flushed once more, and he's going to run it. Wow. And he's got some lanes. M missed tackle by Niger Smith, but he is grabbed and thrown down by Heath. The nice another first down run for Rosenberger. He's really making something out of nothing here, and he is marching his team down the field. Knights don't have any timeouts remaining in the first half, so they're going to have to manage the clock really well with three minutes and 32 seconds left. Rosenberger again drops back, trying to throw. Throws, fade. Heath doesn't turn around. Nearly caught. Receiver wants a flag. Kensel's not going to get it. There was nothing dirty about that play. Second down for the Knights. It's good coverage on the play by Heath. The Knights want to take a chance, maybe catch the Eagles by surprise by throwing it deep. No safety help on the play, so they... Rosenberg wanted to give Kinsel a chance on the outside to make a play for him. Yeah, the Eagles seem to be letting their safeties and corners on an island tonight, trusting them to make the play as they are trying to rush Rosenberg out of the pocket. They're doing a really good job tonight. Nothing doing, and he's going to be dragged to the ground by Smoot for a huge sack on second down, and that is a drive killer as the Knights have not been able to handle big third down conversions. Knights might run a draw play here, just try to not let the defense force another turnover. Third and 17 from their 30 from the 31 yard line. Like we said at pregame, their kicker is not the strongest. I don't think they would bring him out, even if they made it a reasonable field goal. I think right now it is four down territory for the Knights. And if the Eagles do stop this third down, look to see if they call a timeout to save some clock for the offense, maybe drive again. Going deep over the middle, got a man, and he's got the first down as the Knights converge and now are in the red zone at about the seven-yard line, and now Preston is knocking on the door. A 20-yard pickup for Rosenberger and his receivers. Hunter Lance ran a good route underneath the safeties. Knew where the line of gain was. Came there, came back, got the first down. Drops back, looking for something over the middle and oh. nearly intercepted with one hand. Not the play the Knights wanted to run. Really bad decision by Rosenberger to put it in the middle of the field driving. Could have ended the drive. That brings us to second down and 10 from the 11 with a minute 48. If Preston can get into the end zone, they may gain some momentum going into halftime. A design run for Rosenberger, and he's going to be stopped and dropped for a loss. And he had a man in the far corner of the end zone. Record was open, but it was a design run for Rosenberger. And then the Eagles call timeout on third down with a minute 35 to go. Was a run pass option for Rosenberger. Didn't like what he seen from his receiver, so he decided to take it, try to make a play. It didn't work out. The Eagles were ready for that one. Knights haven't been successful this first half, but if they could find points at the end of the half, maybe they could take some into, into the half, have a little bit more confidence going into the locker room. This has been their best drive of the night. Some penalties have helped them move the ball a little bit. 
We should, we'll see what they draw up here on third and 11 from the 12 to try to get in the end zone and probably go for it on fourth down if they can't convert. Crowd's going to be a factor here. Everyone's going to be loud, trying to make it as tough as it can be for the Preston Knights offense to try to call a play and be successful and get a first down. The defense is back on the field as we wait for Preston. And we will try to get you some other score updates from the games we were looking at tonight. Bub made the game day pick, so we'll see how you're doing. See if we can check in on any of those. It's, the Eagles still are up 28 with a minute 35 as Preston is knocking on the door. Rosenberg drops back, going for a fade. Hunter needs to turn around, oh, and he didn't. Defensive pass there. Easy call for the referees. All over Kinsel. Didn't all he had to do was turn around and make it an attempt on the ball. A terrible throw by Rosenberg. It had no chance of getting there. But easy call, and that's going to make this third down or possibly fourth down, excuse me, easier for the Knights. Kinsel looks to be the number one playmaker on the Knights' offense. They've been giving them chances to make plays. Knights are taking advantage of the eagle penalties this drive, and they've been successful on this drive on the first and goal now. So we do have some scores for you. Morgantown is up on Musselman, 21-15 at half. So your, your pick may be in jeopardy right there. Boonesboro is leading Spring Mills 15-12. As Rosenberger takes a direct snap, he's got a lane to the end zone, and he will score, and the Knights are on the board. That six-yard run will get the Knights on the board for the first time tonight. Looks like they'll keep the offense on the field, go for a two-point conversion. I don't think this is by design, though. It looked like their kicker had no confidence kicking PATs. So it looks like they think they'll have a better chance to get a two-point conversion here. What type of play call you think they'll run? You I think they'll think, run the ball or pass it? I think it? it will be a run play. Design run with Desi Rosenberger. Design run, Rosenberger. Gribble's in the backfield with him. He's got three receivers on the near side. Some, def some defensive confusion. He's got to get this playoff soon. Drops back, and he Smoot is going to... Almost bring him down. That one's picked up off the ground. He did complete it, but he was short. A solid rush by the Eagles, and somehow Rosenberg got that pass off, but that will not get them the two-point conversion. So with a minute and 24 remaining in the second half, the first half, excuse me, Hedgesville leads the Knights 28-6. to six. So you can at least tell me my Martinsburg pick was right. Well, I'm working on it. The last I saw, Kaiser was up on Hampshire, 27-3. to uh, Martins, I'm pretty sure your pick for Martinsburg is solid. It is, uh, as of about 45 minutes ago, 50 to nothing, Martinsburg. 9.40 left in the first half. Glad to see I'll get at least two games right this week. We'll see what's going on around the area and bring you those scores as we get them. How do you think the Eagles approach this uh, upcoming drive? With a minute and 24, if they can get a good kickoff return, we'll, this is the first time the Knights have kicked off tonight. We'll see what goes on. In warm-ups, they seem to be doing squibs, not a whole lot of deep kicks to keep it away from those Eagles' deep returners. Malachi Brown, the deepest returner for the Eagles, is about on his 13-yard line. So... If the Eagles can get a short kickoff return, or big kickoff return, is this one squibbed on the ground, and it's going to be given to... Nigeria Smith is going to field it at the 20. And he's about to... Oh, he makes a move. Huge block by Malachi Brown. And Niger is tossed out of bound at about the 38-yard line. So a good return. 38-yard line, their own 38. Kind of a short field, a minute 17. I don't know. Jason's got the arm to get him downfield, and maybe in field goal range for Finnegan. There's an injured knight on the field. That's John Doe. We don't have his name on the roster, and he was the one that Malachi Brown blew up on the block. Maybe just the wind knocked out of him. Doesn't seem to be in too much pain, just trying to get his breath back. Coach Urish showing some respect here as he's out there with, his, with the injured Knights player. 
The athletic trainer, Chris Cole from Pivot Physical Therapy, is out to see what's wrong with uh, Knight's injured player. And the team doctor for Hedgesville is out there too, Dr. David Morris. And maybe it's worse than we think. He seems to be in some serious pain. Hopefully he just got the wind knocked out of him. He'll be all right to return. Looks like they're checking out his midsection. Maybe his leg. I didn't, I mean, he did get blown up. I just thought, uh, I just assumed that he got the wind knocked out of him. It was a huge block by Malachi. Malachi's only 155 pounds, but he can pack a punch. That's true. Malachi is second on, third on this team in tackles. So he's no stranger to some big hits. We'll see what the Eagles do on this drive going into the half. If they can get a solid gain on first down, maybe changes the way they approach it. I wouldn't expect them to maybe take a shot. If they do, we'll hope it works out for them. This may be more serious than we think as now Berkeley County medical officials are walking to the injured player. But as I was saying, if they don't score on this drive, it won't be heartbreaking. They've already got a 22-point lead as the injured player is now up. And Brown goes out there. Make sure he's, make sure he's right. okay. He gets a nice applaud from the crowd. Good sportsmanship being shown there. And he's walking off under his own power. Maybe just dinged up a little bit. He doesn't seem to be holding anything. Maybe his wrist. I can't really tell from here. But as I was saying, if they don't score on this drive, it shouldn't be a huge deal with the big lead and the ball after half. So we'll see how they approach this drive. I think if you're the coaches, you draw up a play that's manageable for Plotner to complete and be successful at. Just don't want to turn over the ball with only a minute left in the half. He's got big play receivers, and that was one of our keys to the game for the Eagles is to limit turnovers none thus far and we will see if they can carry that into the half. Looks like they're going to be aggressive. Plotner in the shotgun. Motioning Smith flushed out got Malachi deep chucks it. He's behind the defense and wow. just as we said there were no turnovers. Plotner throws his 10th interception of the year. I may have jinxed him there Bubby. Yeah. Kinsel with the interception. Really talented player, making some plays for the Preston Knights. That pass seemed to be telegraphed as he was flushed, uh, flushed out, only had one man downfield. Preston safeties and corners, easy coverage as they just ran under the ball. Didn't have enough to get to Malachi. So let's see if the Knights try to march it downfield. No timeouts, a minute five, starting on their own 29-yard line. Let's see what they can do. I think Gurish is frustrated because he knew Plotner could have thrown the ball away, maybe kept the drive going a little bit. Yeah, not a very smart decision. No one was really open. Malachi was was behind the defense, but Plotner has shown this year he doesn't always have the arm to get it there. He has some big playability, but that one just seemed to be floating for the defense. Rosenberger designed run and swallowed in the backfield by Zar Parrish and Ethan Faircloth. Looks like the Knights will be content, content. with this yep. first half. Just trying to get it back to the half. Trying to get into the locker room with no injuries. No more injuries at, other than that one we just saw. Overall, how do you think the Eagles have been performing this first half? If I'm the coaching staff, I have to be pretty pleased with this first half. Obviously, a quick two-play drive, scoring drive to start, and then a pick six right after that, and then another scoring drive right after that, making it 21-0, and then a late, uh, later score here as Rosenberg drops back and Ooh. is hammered by Smoot and Parrish. And that should bring us to the end of the first half. Yeah, really the only only thing I think that the coaches can find as a mistake was that turnover just now. But it won't hurt the Eagles as they'll go into the half with a 28-6 lead. As time winds down, the teams will head to the locker room. Eagle coaching staff has to be pleased as their team gets a nice round of applause from this large Hedgesville crowd. We will be back with you after halftime. Thank you for watching our live broadcast tonight.
We would like to wish the Lady Eagles volleyball team good luck tomorrow as they participate in the George Washington Invitational. You just watched the halftime performance of the Lady, not Lady, excuse me, the Eagle Marching Band. Not only does the volleyball team have a tournament tomorrow, so does the marching band you just watched. They will be competing tomorrow, probably doing that same routine. As we welcome you back into the broadcast, we have some score updates for you around the area and to check on Bub's pregame predictions. So in the Spring mills Boonesboro game, I'm pretty sure you took Spring Mills. Not doing so well in that one as they are down 28-19 to at home with about two minutes left in the third quarter. Should have never taken Spring Mills. Hedgesville's rival making me look bad. <laughs> 
uh, after three quarters in Inwood, Musselman has come back from their halftime deficit to take a one-point lead, 22-21, over the Mohegans of Morgantown. So your pick is looking pretty good in that one. I don't jinx it. As we move over into Hampshire, Kaiser still leads 34 to 12. Looks like Kaiser will win that one. So as we finish our score wrap up with ours here, the Eagles were leading the Preston Knights 28 to six at half. I caught up with one of the playmakers of the Eagles, Nigeria Smith, earlier today. I'm here with Nigeria Smith, Hedgesville's junior safety. Nigeria, you've really been a leader on this defense so far. How does that? What does that mean to you to be a leader on a senior heavy offense or defense? Uh, that means a lot to me. I mean, I really take pride in defense. So after Gavin going down, I felt like I'd have to step up and play a big role in playing defense this year. So the student section for Hedgeville is pretty hype. Everyone knows about it. And they've really seemed to attach to you, and you've become one of the fan favorites. How, what would you say to the student section? Uh, I appreciate the love they showed me, but I'm just a piece of the puzzle. And I feel like everybody should get that same energy on the field anyways. All right. Many people in this area believe Hedgesville's four and one start is a bit of a fluke due to our strength of schedule. What would you say to them, and how does that? What do you think your team? How you, how we, how would your team respond to that? Uh, the fluke schedule, like we use that as motivation on the field during Friday nights. That's like our fuel uh, when we're going against uh, different opponents every week. Uh, what our team is capable of, I feel like we are capable of a lot more than what we've shown, and I feel like there's still more to come. All right, thank you, Nigeria. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Just now, uh, our baseball coach, Coach Grove, shouted out one of his golfers. Who the golf team is going to the state tournament this week, upcoming week in Wheeling. So uh, that's big for them. That's the first time the golf team itself has gone as a team to the state tournament. They've had representatives before, but good for the golf team. And as we talked about pregame, most of the Hedgesville sports teams last year took home sectional titles. Really good season for all the Eagle teams. And this year it seems to be the same. We are about two minutes away from the start of the second half here in Hedgesville at Muma Stadium. Ne neither team has emerged from the locker room yet. This upcoming week at Hedgesville High School will be homecoming week. Each day, there is a spirit day starting Monday with America Monday. Next, uh, followed by Tuesday, Fashion Disaster Day. Wednesday will be Disney Day. Students will dress up as Disney characters from all the movies. Thursday is Hawaiian Day. And then Friday, we end it all with the homecoming pep rally and blue and gold day and the that friday night's game here at Muma stadium against muslim will be a gold rush for the entire fan fans all the fans of the eagles and all of the homecoming courts will be announced we voted on that today in class should be a fun fun week next week as the eagles have emerged from the locker room the first team to do so with about a minute to go before halftime Preston might be taking their time. They might not want to come back off onto the field. They might be getting some words of wisdom from their coaches trying to get them back in this game. If you're the Preston coach, what do you do to tell your team they're still in and they have a fighting chance? Well, for them, I think the first thing I would tell them is we have to get a stop on this opening drive for the Eagles, who will get the ball here to start the second half. And if, that, if they can't do that, I don't know what else you can tell them, but you can try to keep their spirits up and keep them in this game. And if Preston doesn't come out of the locker room soon, they might get a penalty. But I see them walking out, or at least their coaches walking out now.
can in the student section real quick, I'll text them. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a second. Preston still slowly making their way out. Shows they're not looking forward to uh, coming back and finish this game. And now Preston has emerged from the locker room. Coach must have had some strong words for them in the locker room. There you have our Eagles student section, one of the rowdiest group of people in the state cheering on their Eagles. Always at every game. It's a lot of fun to be down there. They've had a lot to cheer for from that first half. So some first half statistics. Jason Plotner with three touchdown passes, only one interception, not what you wanted to see. He was doing so good until we I said something about it. He's got two touchdowns to Malachi Brown, who also has a pick six on the night. A really good defensive start for him. A couple huge passes, uh, some nice moves by Malachi in the open field. On the other side of the ball, Rosenberger is struggling a little bit on offense. Has two interceptions. He does have the six-yard rushing touchdown. Their Knights only score tonight. Preston's really struggling on third down. So when they get late in drives, they can't convert to keep them going. I think part of the reason why Rosenberg has been struggling is because that equal defense has been stacking the box. Seven and eight men just crowding the line, coming with blitzes at all different angles. And it's really been affecting that Preston Knight offensive line. Really haven't found an answer to it yet. We'll see if the coach has made an adjustment, maybe using an extra tight end or a bigger running, running back to block some of the blitzes coming off the edge. We are soon about to start the second half of play with Hedgesville up 28-6 on the Knights of Preston. The Eagles will receive the ball and be heading towards the concession stand of the concession stand side of the field to start the second half. Jason Plotter and his offense will get a chance to push this lead out and probably take Preston out of the game for good. What do you think the chances are of Preston trying to do an onside kick? Well, they've given Hedgesville good field position all night, and Hedgesville's really taking advantage of it. So if I if I were them, I wouldn't try that here tonight or on this kickoff. And I'm sure Hedgesville's coaches are reminding the special teams unit about a possible onside kick. Just be ready for it. Don't be surprised if it does happen. The deep men for the Eagles, Malachi Brown and Nigier Smith. Valentine will set it up for the Knights. Swap footballs out. Quick timeout. <laughs> and we are underway in the second half as a pooch kick goes to Smoot. Trouble with it. Fields it at the... 33, and he's got some blockers, but he will be wrestled down at about the 49-yard line. 
Another great starting field position spot for the Eagles offense. See if they can capitalize off of it and really seal the game. That looks like a little wildcat formation with Brown in the backfield. Let's see what this play call is to start the second half. Might be run to the right side using Co as a lead blocker. Plotner's going out for a pass, but Brown is running it. Plotner with a huge block. That guy had one man to beat, and he's upended at the 35-yard line. And there's an injured night player. Plotner was blocking him, and he got every bit of him. Number 22, couldn't get out of the way of it. Looks like Riley Bellinger will stay on the field for this first down. Plotner all alone in the backfield. It's the same formation they just had, but this time it looks like it will be a pass play. He's rolling to his left. Point, directing traffic, ball up for Chase DeLauder, back of the end zone. He's down with it, and they say he's out of bounds. Chase does not like that call. Good play, good decision by Jason to direct traffic, and that is incomplete. That was DeLauder's first target of the night. He went up, made a play, just unfortunately a little bit out of bounds. That was an impressive catch as the defender was right in front of him. And he, I didn't see that. I couldn't tell if he was in bounds or not. But that was a great effort, nonetheless, to come down with the ball. Delar's got good size. He's six foot, weighing about 175. Smith in motion for the Eagles. Plotter rolling again, targeting Delauder again, tries to reverse it, and that one's uh, picked off again by Kinzel. A dangerous pass, and Jason Plotter has thrown his second interception of the night. Good pressure up the middle by David Pratt, number 53, the middle linebacker for the Knights. Really forced Jason Plotter to make a bad decision. And that's where the coaches want to see Plotter probably make a better decision and throw it out of bounds so you keep the drive going and don't waste good field position. So that's what Preston wanted coming out of the locker room, a quick turnover, a stop, and they'll take over on the 20-yard line, and we'll see what they can do in the locker room. And another interception for Kent, so that's his second of the game, really making an impact on that Preston Knight defense. With that interception, that brings Jason's total on the year to 11. Now double-digit turnovers for him. A quick screen to Summers, blown up by Faircloth. Couldn't bring him down, but they're going to say forward momentum was stopped. Simple play call, just trying to get Rosenberger back into the game with a simple completion, try to get some working on a long drive ahead of him. Rosenberg drops back, nothing doing. He's going to be dropped for a sack. Smoot, and I think I want to say Faircloth were back there. I didn't see there was a lot of bodies in the way, but another negative, yard, negative yardage play will bring up a third and long for the Knights. Third and 22 from their own eight-yard line. Let's see if the Eagles bring pressure. And Preston can't allow a sack like that. Rosenberg has got to get rid of the ball. Change an audible at the line, help his offensive line out. Now it really makes it tough for them to gain a first down on this play. The line to gain is the 31 as Rosenberg drops back, throws a screen or a slant, excuse me. They're saying, <clears throat> excuse me, they're saying Christopher Ryan brought in that pass, but it'll be well short of the first down marker. Now they're saying incomplete. And that's why Preston has to stay ahead of the chains. They get in those predictable passing downs, and their offensive line can't hold up, so the defense is causing good pressure. Preston will now punt out of its own end zone, 
And Coach Urs is motioning Malachi to come closer and closer as he is now standing at about the 34-yard line. Let's see if the Eagles bring the house or try to block it. They do. And Smoot. And Najir Smith comes out of the block to catch that at the 20. And now the Eagles will have amazing field position again. And let's see Jason Plotter trotting onto the field. Doesn't look too happy. He's yelling at somebody. But this is a good chance for Plotner to repad his stats a little bit, get some confidence going. You know, defense did a good job holding him. Now I just need to capitalize, score a touchdown out of it. Looks like a run play on first down. Hand off to Smoot up the middle. Bounces to the outside for a gain of about six. And that's one thing the Eagles have done well offensively. They've been really running the football well, getting good blocks from the offensive line, and Smoot find the holes to get positive plays. Coach Gillis, I was talking to him earlier this week. He said his their, the team goal was to have 300 or more rushing yards in the game tonight. I don't think they're there yet. I don't have an official stat total on that, but they have been running the ball with some efficiency. Maybe possible when they're trying to melt the clock away in the game, really work on their run. Oh, it's got to be called back. False, False start. start. Plotner looking for someone. Now he's going to take off and run with it. He's got a lane. Nowhere. To, fumbles the ball. And that may be Preston football. It is. He kept the ball inbounds as Jason fumbled it at the two-yard line. Another costly turnover as the Eagles were trying to score and stretch this lead. Plotner saw that end zone and got excited. Tried to break a tackle and just Preston Knights forced another turnover. So once again, the, our keys to the game for Hedgesville was limit turnovers, and they were doing that for all of the first half except for the last minute or so. And then here in the second, both drives open with a turnover, an interception, and a fumble. Fortunately for the Eagles, the defense has been playing well and holding the Preston Knights offense to only six points into the second half, so the turnovers haven't affected the Eagles that much on offense. Let's see if the defense brings the house and try to get a safety and push that lead a little bit further. Summers moved to the opposite side of Rosenberg, and he's going to drop back and pass from his own end zone. Quick nearly pulled in, but that'll be incomplete. You have to question the Preston Knights want to be on the field right now. Maybe they'll put in some inexperienced players just to keep players, their first stringers, healthy going into the next week. Second and ten from the two-yard line. It looks like they're in the power eye formation. Now he moves Summers out to his right. Rosenberger again is going to drop back into his end zone. Blitz coming. Feels it. Summers over the middle, and Summers is... Tripped up, a late flag comes in as Heath brings him down at about the 30. A 29-yard gain. Let's see if it stands. Might be a late block in the back, but that was well past the first down chains. And another costly penalty for the Knights that just drives him back a few more yards after a costly holding penalty. They're going to give them the first down, but when the holding penalty, it'll bring the gain from the 30 back to the 18. Rosenberger's really earning the respect of his coaches and teammates as he took a shot in the end zone, but hung in there, found his receiver, and they gained a first down out of it. 
Four receivers out wide for Rosenberger. Gibble in the backfield with him this time as the Eagles are showing pressure off the edge of Jesse Kane. He's flushed out. Ball nearly stripped. For a sh and he makes it up for about a two-yard gain. Or no gain, excuse me. Preston has to be careful. He can't turn over the ball this close near the Eagles end zone. Really, a turnover ends the game for him, too. They have to score on this possession. That's they what you would chance. think, but after those first two Eagle drives of this half, we don't. it doesn't look like they want to be on the field right now. Just two costly turnovers on the edge of scores. It may be a quarterback-designed run there as Rosenberg brings it up to about the 23-24 yard line. About a third and five on the play. I think the Eagles bring the blitz, put the pressure on the Knights offensive line to be able to handle the blitz coming in. Rosenberger will look to pack, gain the first down on this third and four. Haven't had much success on third down. Flushed out, was one man to beat to for the first. He does, and he will scurry out of bounds for the first down. Rosenberger has been able to show the ability that he can run the ball to escape the blitzes. Doing a pretty good job staying composed and knowing where his receivers are blocking. Rolling to his left this time, and a oh. big rush, balls out, Stambaugh hops on it, he's Mike Scurry into the end zone for six. What a hit by Smoot. And as a result, the ball popped out, Rosenberger blasted in the backfield, Jonathan Stambaugh picks up the fumble and runs in for six as the Eagles push this lead even further. What a hit by Smoot to force that fumble, and then Jonathan Stambaugh, the awareness to grab it and scurry into the end zone. Got to be degrading for the Knights. They might have just given up their chances to win tonight. And the Eagles had to call a timeout as they had too many men on the field and he wasn't getting off in time. I'm sure when they go over film study, the Eagles will make sure they don't make any mistakes like that in a key matchup against Mossman next week. They will have to tighten up the turnover issue they have this year. But if the defense can carry the momentum into next week, force a few turnovers, give Plotner and the Eagle offense good field position, it should be pretty successful against the Mossman team. Bub, I'm happy to report that you got one of your picks correct as a final from Corbin Field over at Martinsburg High School. Martinsburg 57, Washington 0. As Finnegan Hall's extra point is up and good. Pushing the score to 35-6. to six. I don't think anybody really gave Washington a chance to win that one. They've been rebuilding for quite some time now. Musselman is now down 36 to 29 to Morgantown late in the fourth quarter after a touchdown. And Kaiser has pushed their lead even further over Berkeley Springs. Sounds like that Musselman Morgantown game has been a good one so far. Morgantown coming off that loss to Martinsburg 51 to 7. 
see if they can recover and get back in the win, win column. The mother scores around the state. We have at the end of the third quarter, St. Albans 30, University 28. The university has a really good football program in the state of West Virginia. They are, in fact, tied for first in the playoff rankings, so it should be interesting to see how that shakes out, and we can see if St. Albans can keep University down in that fourth quarter. North Marion leads Berkeley Springs 49-7 with 2.16 remaining in that game. I think I'm two for two now. I do too, bub. As Finnegan Hall's kick will be fielded at the 10-yard line. Brought up past the 20 and knocked down, taken down at the 28-yard line. For those double-A schools like Berkeley Springs, it's tough for them to beat the triple-A schools that are really talented like North Marion. North Marion is a double-A school. They are staying in their class. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> You're anyway, fine, Bob. Got the pick right. That's all that matters. Uh, Kaiser is still up on Hampshire, so that one's still looking pretty good for you there. I think the only game I'll miss tonight's the... Mossman again. We'll see how that one plays Spring out. Spring Mills, too. No score report on the Spring Mills Boonesboro game just yet, but we will keep you updated as Roman Breezer drops back, throws a wobbly pass to Summers, who rumbles and bumbles for the first down. Yeah, two of the EPAC teams I've taken have you know, really struggled tonight, making me look bad. We'll see how you do later in the season. That just what it looks to have as they still have their first stringers in. Oh, it'll, oh. Be, it'll be encroachment on Nathaniel Hughes. A little too excited. A whole, it seemed like the entire Preston offense moved a little bit. Now the officials have a tough decision to make. Dead ball encroachment on the defense. I want to go against Nathaniel Hughes. A little too excited out of the snap. Quarterback might have changed the snap count. Got the Eagles defense a little, a little restless. So now the Knights will start with a first and five from their own 44-yard line as Rosenberg drops back. There was another slant. Nearly intercepted by Niger Smith, but he couldn't hang on to it. He'll be upset with himself on that one. He wanted that one really bad, and if he could have intercepted that one, he was probably going to score on that play. He's telling the sideline, my bad. Second and five for the Knights. Nothing doing on the right side. And now he's going to bring it near field, near sideline. And a Brett is going to wrestle him down at the 45, but not after he gains the first down. It's a good tackle by a Brett. Good closing speed to chase down the quarterback for the Knights. Fans are getting a little upset with the defense. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Rosenberg drops back again. Throws a wobbly one up for Summers and out too far. He had Coe beat, but not a good pass. Coe did a pretty good job there using the sideline as an extra defender. Rosenberger was looking for Gribble on the, on the side on a vertical play. Couldn't find him, though. Right 
In the backfield now with Rosenberger is Gribble. Out wide, he's got Summers and Kinzel. Four receivers total. Hand off to Gribble up the middle, and he is met and taken down by a Breck. Only a gain of five, but that's been one of the better rushing plays for the Knights tonight. As low as that gain was, they haven't been able to do anything on the, on the ground. Nothing up the middle. Mostly runs to the outside, but up the middle they've really struggled. So that may be a little bit of sign of light for them. Rosenberger dropping back, looking for a screen. Nothing there. He's going to take off with it and slide down wisely as three Eagle defenders were closing in. Zar, Par Zar Paris, Obrek, and Ethan Faircloth all closing in on him in a wise play just to take the gain of two. Preston's going to go for this one. Fourth and short. Punting game hasn't been too successful tonight in their way out of field goal range. Good Preston coach, what do you call up for Rosenberger? He's had some success running to the outside of the field, outside the hash marks. Maybe it'll just be a design run. He's got some receivers on the far side. He's looking that way, screen, and it is blown up by Zar Parrish. The Eagles are ready for that play on defense. Handled it well for a turnover on downs. You know, one storyline to take away from this game is the defense has been playing really well. Mason, how do you think that the defense will be able to carry the momentum into next week? Well, hopefully they'll have a good week of practice leading up to that homecoming game against Musselman. Musselman, one of the tougher teams in the state, undefeated to this point. We don't know how they're doing in that Morgantown game right now. We'll get you an update soon. But the defense has played really well. This is If this score holds, this will be the second time they've only allowed six points this year as Smoot takes a no gain handoff. Excuse me, two yard gain. But I think if they can keep the score, keep pressing at six for the rest of the game, they can carry that into next week, a, a really tough home game. They're gonna need to win. As a screen pass to Malachi Brown, and he's gonna blow by the block. He's got one man to beat. He's gonna cut it back inside and he could go. An his third touch receiving touchdown of the night, another screen, and his fourth total. Malachi Brown having the game of his life here for the Eagles. What a quick strike from the Eagles as they push the lead to 41, possibly 42, with the impending field extra point. Finnegan's kick is up and good. It makes Hall six for six on extra points tonight. Which is a good sign after last week at James Wood. They he had, had a, struggles. There was a, some blocking issues, and he actually had a, at least two blocked. Special teams coach has made an adjustment for Hedgesville as they've put two extra blockers right in front of Hall, opposed to last week when he had nobody in front of him. And it seems to be working so far. The announcer, Coach Grove, calling out all the varsity cheerleaders for Hedgesville as they do a great job, you know, putting together good cheer routines, really bringing the pep to the student section and the rest of the crowd. So with 2.47 remaining in the third quarter, the Eagles will kick off to the Knights, and we'll see how deep Finnegan can put this kick. He has only had one touchback tonight.
How do you think the Eagles will play defensively this next possession? Do you think they'll keep the starters still in? I don't think they take any of the starters out as that kick will roll out of bounds for a penalty. I don't think they'll take any of the starters out until at least the fourth quarter. Well, that leads me to my next question. When do you think it's time for them to pull the starters out so no one gets injured? You know, maybe after a late play, you know, retaliation, anger being let out. How do they avoid that? I think at the start of the fourth quarter, maybe the first drive they may leave some starters in, and then after that they'll start to put some subs in, maybe the backup quarterback, get him some reps. We'll see how they play it. Coach Urich does have a very sizable lead right now, and we'll see what he chooses to do with his squad. It's good to see the second stringers and third stringers get some playing minutes as they work hard at practice just like these starters for Hedgesville and really want to be successful just like these guys are, Ben, tonight. And we are going to redo the kickoff here in a moment. Looks like Morgantown's going to win. At the end of the third quarter, Kaiser was leading Hampshire 41-12. to So the Golden Tornado seemed to be a good pick for you there, Tyler. And a pooch kick. Oh, ah. Javen Wilmer was there but just couldn't get to it in time. Well executed play call, though. You know, some Finnegan did his job. Javen just couldn't get to it. Looks like they'll mix in some of the first stringers and second stringers for the defense. I think the goal of the coaches is to make sure everyone stays healthy going into next week. Next week's a big game. The next two games are big for these Eagles as Musselman and Martinsburg come to town back-to-back -back weeks during this four-game home stretch. Rosenberger designed run to the outside, breaks a couple tackles, and fighting for yardage. He might be short of the first down and look like a nine-yard gain to me, and they will they're gonna they're gonna give it down. to him. Good start for the Preston offense. You like to see that, you know, he's not giving up. It's been a long night for him. You know, easy to give up, 42-6, you know, nothing to play for, but he's still fighting. Rosenberger, another design run, this time up the middle, and he is met by safety Nigeria Smith for just a, looks to be a six-yard gain. Good open field tackle by Smith. If he misses that tackle, that might be a touchdown for Rosenberger. While we uh, close the third quarter out, there's only a minute before he left. Mason, who do you think will win tonight, USC or Washington State? Oh, the big college game tonight. Um, Both teams coming in ranked. I do want Washington State to win, but I don't think they can pull it out. They do have home field advantage as Rosenberger takes another design run up the middle and a flag comes in we'll see how many, on the offense. We'll see how many times Washington State throws the ball tonight. They might throw it 60, yard, 60 times tonight. A holding penalty will bring that run back. As of right now in the college season, who do you have as your top four playoff teams? Obviously, you have to have Alabama number one. I think Clemson would be my two. Penn State has looked sharp. Struggled with Iowa last week, but I think they'll be fine. Uh, four? It's really undecided. Yeah. yeah. And that's why college football is so great. You know, you never know going into each week, you know, what could happen.
maybe TCU at the end of this week. They're playing really well right yep, now. Yep, yep. Rosenberg drops back to pass, flushed out of the pocket again. Stanball with some pressure, gets a, eludes it, throws out of bounds. Had Summers, but just overthrew him. For the viewers watching, Mason is a hard, diehard WVU fan. That how is a you, fact. How do you assess Will Greer's performance this season so far? Well, in the first game against your Virginia Tech Hoagies, he kind of started off a little slow, but he looked pretty good. And then through our cupcake portion of the schedule, he really tore up the defenses of East Carolina, Delaware State, and Kansas. So I think he should do us a, do a good job for us as we go into Big 12 play. A deep ball, nearly hauled in with a sliding grab, but incomplete as Kinsel couldn't bring that one in. And it'll bring up a fourth and 17. For the viewers watching, you did hear Mason correctly. I am a Virginia Tech Hokie fan, even though I live in West Virginia. Asking Mason, a biased WVU fan, do you think the Hokies have any chance to knock off the Clemson Tigers tomorrow night? I think it'll be a close game, but if Virginia Tech's going to win, it'll be on one of those last-second miracles you see all the time. Ah. They do have home field advantage, so that we'll see how that plays a role as Preston will punt again. Been a rough night for him as that one is shanked and will roll out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. But he did a good job keeping it away from the dangerous return man, Niger Smith. Eagles will take over with 46 seconds remaining in this third quarter, up 42 to six. With the fourth quarter looming, as you've alluded to, Bub, the starters will be coming out here soon and some bench players will be getting some reps for the Eagles. Really a key player for special teams is Fangen Hall, kicker punter, he's excellent. We haven't seen him that much though tonight. Yeah, a little end around as Chase Delauder throws a big block. And Nigeria Smith is running up the sideline, stays in bounds, and is wrestled down. A touchdown saving tackle by Christian Ryan as that end around works to perfection as Smith takes that one all the way up the sideline to the, excuse me, 32 yard line. Coach Yurish getting a little, little expanded in the playbook, getting creative with it. Excuse me, 27 yard line of Preston. Huge gain to start off this drive. Malachi Brown with the ball, trying to find the end zone for the fifth time tonight. Jumps over a man uh, in. They're going to be calling that one back, though. It looks like it'll be a hold on Hunter Co. Was it a shuffle pass or was it a design run? I didn't see it off it the ball. Like a design run to the outside. <laughs> and th this one is, in fact, coming back. Good eye out there, Bub. Being an Eagle fan supporting the Hedgesville football team, you'd like to see Plotner, you know, finish off the night with a touchdown. Touchdown pass, yeah. Yeah. He has four tonight with two interceptions and a fumble. So he's had a decent night. Pretty pretty solid with some of those touchdowns being over 50 yards. As time, let's see if they get this playoff before time runs out in the oh. third. And they do. Preston bringing some pressure. Jason up. He's got Malachi. Nearly hauled in as that will bring us to the end of the third quarter with your Hedgesville Eagles leading the Preston Knights 42 to 6. So we will switch ends of the field for the fourth quarter, and we will see if the Eagles can push their lead up to 43 points.
The Eagles will start this drive on the 28-yard line. Let's see if Coach Harris dips into his bag of tricks one more time. The Eagles did start last week's game against James Wood with an end around the end. Ended up having Devin Heath throw an 89-yard touchdown to Niger Smith. They're kind of close, a little bit too close to the end zone for a play like that. But that was a fun way to start the game. Started, it was the first play from scrimmage for the Eagles, and it got them off to a good start against James Wood last week in their 28-23 win over the Colonels. Those types of plays to really get the crowd into it. You know, build up the volume. Looks like they'll run a screen pass, though. A fake as Jason Plotner takes it, and he could go, but there's a flag in the backfield, and he is wrestled out of bounds inside the five. This one's definitely coming back as the lead referee was quick to throw that flag. Plotner will be a little upset. That was his longest rush of the game being taken back. Yeah, one takeaway that the Eagles, I think, will find in film is they also need to cut down on penalties. Penalties have been driving, drive killers. It's really slowing down the momentum of the offense. It wasn't a big deal in the first quarter, the penalties, but they've really picked up later as the game has gone on. And the coaching staff cannot be happy. They, they believe they have a very well-disciplined team, but tonight it just hasn't shown. Thing about that that really hurts is it takes Finnegan Hall out of range. He has a big leg too. They're on the 41 yard line of Preston. Same formation. Let's see if they run something similar to what they just did. No, he's going looking only for Chase Lauder. He's got him. He's got the man beat and he Aww. just overthrows him. Jason upset. I can't tell if he's upset with him himself or Chase. But that ball just kept on floating. Looked like Chase Delar just ran a straight vertical route, beat his man, would have scored if it, that pass was completed. He had his man beat by about four or five yards, so if that one was dropped in the basket, that was an easy six points. Chase has been targeted on three right. deep balls tonight and hasn't not, none have come down with him. As Preston calls their first time out of the second half. Injured night number 16, Hunter Lance. Might be having cramps. Hopefully it's nothing serious. What do you think the Eagles will run on a third and 24 play? I think they should just play field position at this point as the line again is the 18-yard line. Maybe a run to Smoot, see what he can do, or a screen to Smith or Brown, see if they can work their magic. But if you can't get the first down, I think with a lead like this, you let Finnegan trot out there and try to make his third field goal of the year. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think a conservative draw play, maybe try to get seven to eight yards to keep it a little bit more manageable for Finnegan to kick. Or a screen pass using their big receivers like Hunter Coe, being able to block in space for their athletic playmakers like Niger Smith and Malachi Brown. In practice, Finnegan is consistently good from 50 yards, according to Coach Irish. But right now, if they were to try to kick a field goal right now, it would be about a 58-yarder. So definitely well out of his range. The crowd's going to want to see Finnegan try to take it, though. I would. But let's see. I think they'll play field position here or maybe take a shot. Each defender has man coverage with only one deep safety. Look for Coe to make a double move, just run a straight-up vertical. He's got the height advantage. David Record only listed as 5'9". On Hunter Coe, he's listed at 6'2". So a definite disadvantage for Preston if Jason can see that. He's looking his way. And he will be sacked as he couldn't escape the pocket. And a big stop for Preston. That might be the end of the night for Jason Plotner. They're going to keep the offense on the field. They don't, I guess they don't know if Finnegan can uh, keep or pin Preston deep. And he's definitely well out of field goal range. They might just go for a Hail Mary and just trust the defense to stop him. Or Plotter could do a pooch punt. That's also true. But he's got four men far sideline and Hunter Coe near side all by himself. So they're definitely going for it. Chase explodes off the line. He a wobbly pass, and it's going to be nearly hauled in. Chase had it for a second but dropped it on the way down. Good effort by DeLauda there. But the Eagles will turn it over on downs. 
looks like the Eagles defense will have a few of their second stringers in with the exception of a few players. One, I see, a couple I see. Uh, Ryan Carroll has checked in. Colton Arendi. Caleb Shell is in. This is really good experience for them as if there is a late season injury, hopefully that's not the case. That will happen. But these are valuable reps for the players. Some of the starters still remaining out there. We've got Javen Wilmer, uh, Jesse Kane, Devin Heath. Coach Fairclough for the Eagles isn't too happy with the defense as there's some confusion on substitutions as they had to burn a timeout. So with nine minutes and two seconds remaining, the score stays at 42 to six. And we'll see if we can get you a score, some score updates on some of the games we were checking in on earlier tonight. A final from Spring Mills, Boonesboro takes it 28-26. Sounds like a really good game to be at. Um, Hedgesville should take advantage, get another win, the column, move past Spring Mills. That loss drops Spring Mills to three and three on the year and improves Boonesboro to four and two. Some other scores we were watching. A final from Kaiser, or from Hampshire, excuse me. Kaiser takes this one 53 to 12. Another correct pick for you, Tyler. Two for three so far. It's a pretty solid start. You're looking pretty good in this one, I do say. That headgear pick seems to be working out real well. That was the best pick of the day. It was. It's tough to go with your, your school against them. Oh. Rosenberger throws a pick to Devin Heath. His third interception thrown tonight. So the Eagles have a chance to push this lead even further. Ponder is still in the game. I just want to see him finish out and be content with his performance. Uh, three receivers near side for Plotner and Chase Lauder on the far side as he will hand it off to the freshman, Matt Edmonston. And they say there's a fumble, and Preston says they've got it. And they do. Official. And Preston, Preston has it. Another turnover for the Eagles. The fourth of the night, two interceptions and two fumbles. So after forcing an interception, the Eagles give it right back to the Knights. You know, unfortunately, Hedgesville's been playing a pretty clean game. In this second half, they've been giving turnovers away, playing a little sloppy. Um, coaches will want to fix that in film, and they'll point out mistakes so they don't make them in a more important game against Mosselman next week. The defense back out as Summers, no, excuse me, Gibble takes the handoff, and another flag comes in, really sloppy towards the late half of this game. We have a special guest in the booth, Gavin Smoot, the injured Hedgesville running back. He's been out for the year, but he's still in good spirits. Gavin, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, you know. It's a good night to be an Eagle. Thank you, Gavin. Thanks for visiting, Gavin. Good seeing you, buddy. What a nice surprise for Gavin to come up into the box with us. Unfortunately, his season was cut short, but he has to be happy seeing his brothers do so well successfully and seeing his teammates out there about to get another win.
Rosenberger takes the ball and is running up the sideline and is thrown out of bounds by Devin Heath. A gain of 23, and we would like to ap apologize for the current camera situation. There's inclement weather coming through Hedgesville right now, so we will be on a one-camera system for the remainder of the game. Let's see if this defense can hold as Preston is trying to make this a somewhat reasonable game, but the referees have declared a running clock for the rest of the game as we near the five-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Yeah, the wind's starting to pick up. Everyone wants to get out of here. The officials have done enough work for tonight, and the game's out of hand, so they just want to get home. Rosenberger drops back. Quick screen to Gibble. Ooh. Ooh, nice cutback towards the middle. Couple broken tackles, but is finally dragged down by Eve. Jesse Kane had a free run on Rosenberger, and he's feeling it right now. He's slow to get up. If Rosenberger does go out, who do they go to at quarterback? Their starter seems to be out already. They have freshman Trey Durr on the bench, but it looks like Rosenberger is going to tough it out, just shaking up on the play. Probably give a handoff to make sure he's all right. He's holding his lower back. He's going to feel it in the morning. Second and two from the 24-yard line as Rosenberger looks for a screen. He's got his man, Summers, as he throws it low, and Jesse Kane just downs him. And that should be a first down. The clock has now reached the under the four minute mark as Rosenberger and his offense line up in the power eye formation. He's going to give it to Summers and no, that's, Ryan that's Carroll and excuse me, that's Ryan Carroll and Devin Heath bring him down. For the first, they moved the chains on that play. Overall, how do you assess Hedgesville's performance? It was a good game for the Eagles. Started off fast, kind of slowed down as the game went on, but I think the coaches have a lot to be happy with. They do need to work on cleaning up the turnovers and the penalties, but other than that, it's been a pretty well-coached and well-played game by Hedgesville. Coaches did a good job telling the players to stay focused on this game, not to overlook it. It would be easy to overlook this struggling Preston Knights team and look forward to a homecoming game against Mossman this next Friday. That last play, the Preston offense moves it. About nine yards. Move it up to the 14-yard line with a two-minute, 50-second clock remaining. It'd be good to see the Eagle defense stop the Preston Knight offense once again to keep them under double digits. Another handoff. Kind of fumbled at the line. Summer's trying to get to the end zone, and he is tripped up by Gerald Jones at the end of that run. Jones, one of the smallest players on this Hedgesville team. He's listed at a generous 5'9", but I wouldn't <laughs> give him any more than 5'4". Heavy package in for the Preston Knights. Or back to Summers, and he will score. Preston, late here, adds another touchdown, pushing the score 42-12. to 12. What's up, little guy? You got anything to say to the broadcast? Not really, but it's going to be a good, well, it's already a good game. We're going 42-12. to 12. And what's your favorite thing about high school football games? That it's pl players much older than me. <laughs> that was our producer's son. 
He's our producer. We'd like to thank our whole crew here. Georgia, Hannah, Maggie, and Sam, everyone on cameras. They've done a great job tonight. Thank you, guys. Uh, the two-point two point conversion failed at the end of that drive, so our score remains 42-12. to 12. I'd like to thank the Eagle News Network crew and just let me come on with you, Mason. It's been it's a been, pleasure. It's been fun, Bubs. We'll see you guys later in the year for the senior night game against Hampshire. Bub and I will have that call for you at the end of November. Or, excuse me, end of October. No. Let's go with October and see what happens. It's a few weeks away. Yeah, we got a while. Bub, I'm going to see if I can get you that Musselman score one more time. Looks like Plotner's day is done. He's carried around the bag, starting to unwrap his pads. Well, with a minute 54, there's no reason to try to see if Preston can get a lick on your starting quarterback as this little squib kick will bounce over Smoot and into the hands of Nigeria Smith. He has a chance to return this all the way. A huge a block. block, and he is stays in bounds, breaks that tackle. He's trying to reverse fields. And he is finally taken down at the 40 with another flag in. It looked like his blockers just got tired for him. Just shows the explosive ability some of these players for Hedges will have. We'll see what the call is, but as of right now, the Eagles will start this drive at the 40-yard line. And now trotting out for the Eagles at quarterback, number seven, Ryan Carroll, a sophomore, five... Five foot eight. We'll see what he can do with this last minute and 35. I believe the Eagles should just run this clock out. And the handoff is to Smoot, and he is taken down for about a two yard gain, and that will get the clock rolling. I don't believe Preston will use their two timeouts to stop this clock. Actually, a loss of two, not a gain of two. My apologies. We are now at one minute remaining in this contest. Hedgesville still leads 42-12, to 12, and they are surely taking their time snapping this ball, trying to run this clock out. That play is blown up in the backfield by Preston. Montana Canoy blew up Smoot in the backfield for another loss as the clock ticks under 30 seconds. What a name, Montana Canoy. And that might bring us to the end of this game with the 25 second play clock. So, Bub, I'm glad to report that you correctly picked this game with the headgear selection of the Eagle. Moving, I, what's your record on picks? Three for four. Pending the Muscleman final score. And now we have a final for Muma Stadium. Your Hedgesville Eagles 42 and the Preston Knights 12.
a great game by the Eagles and their offense tonight. Jason Plotner had four touchdown passes, and Malachi Brown added a pick six. Smoot forced a fumble, and Jonathan Stanball picked it up. Jason did struggle with some picks, but that's nothing the Eagles offense can't work on in practice. For all of us here at ENN, Tyler Bubb, Mason Collins, we'd like to thank you for watching our broadcast tonight. Good night, everybody.